We'll show them. I'll tell you, I've never seen one quite so crispy before. Henry, please, let's show some respect. Indeed, crispy really isn't the word, Constable Higgins. I suppose you're right, there's hardly any skin left on him. I'm told you were also in the shed earlier today, Mr. Beesbrook. Leonard Beesbrook. And if I'd been there an hour earlier, it would have been me. Any idea as to the identity of the remains? It must be those of Dr. Eaker. I take it he was a professor at the university? He was the dean of science. Did you and Dr. Eaker cross paths this morning? Only for a brief moment, as I was leaving to meet a friend for lunch. By the time I returned, the shed was ablaze. Right. If you could come this way, please. Henry? Constable Higgins Newsom. Hmm? If you could please finish taking Mr. Beesbrook's statement. Of course, sir. It's just starting to get good. Right this way. Anything of note with the body, Miss Hart? Oh, I'll have to do a more thorough examination, but there are no signs of trauma to the body beyond the burns. Uh, it's possible the victim's death was just a tragic accident. I'm not so sure about that. You see this darker mark through here? Sort of serpentine pattern. What is it? it? May indicate the presence of a chemical accelerant. The fire was set intentionally. It's possible. And if so, who started it? How long had you been Dr. Eaker's secretary, Miss Kent? Three years. Uh, although I was to transfer to the Dean of Arts office next week. What was the reason for the change? I uh, time to broaden my horizons is all. Um, I draw, so art seemed like a good fit for me. Do you know of anyone who may have wished the dean dead? He had his fair share of detractors, though that's not uncommon for someone in such a powerful position. Anyone specific come to mind? Well, he did recently face a challenge to his deanship from Dimitri Laflamme. It's it nasty business. This Laflamme is also a professor here at the university? Yes. He specializes in pyrology. Py pyrology? The scientific study of fire? Exactly. I think I would very much like to speak with this Dr. Laflamme. Be down this hall. You know, make a right and then a left and then a right. Thank you. Have you been able to confirm Mr. Beesbrook's alibi, Henry? Uh, alibi, sir? Oh, <laughs> yes, actually. The friend that Beesbrook lunched with said that they were together from 12 till 1. You seem distracted, Henry, more so than usual. <sighs> it's this book, sir. I can't put it down. I don't recall you being much of a reader. I'm not, sir. But, but Ruth's social calendar is bursting at the seams as of late, and I've needed something to fill the many, many hours I've been home alone with Jordan. I see. I didn't expect it to be such a thrilling pastime, sir. I'm even going to hear the author read later, which means I have only six hours left to finish his book. Be that as it may, you are on duty. So perhaps for the next five and a half hours, we could focus on the task at hand. I will do my best, sir. Dr. Laflamme? You can't have gone far, sir. That tea's still piping, huh? What do we have here? Henry, there are enough accelerants here to burn down the entire university. Who in the blazes are you? Dimitri Laflamme, I presume? Not much of a presumption. What with my name on the door? Um, Detective William Murdoch, Toronto Constabulary. We have a few questions for you. What sort of 
questions? The sort of questions that would be best answered at my place of work. Your place of work? Well, you mean the police station? Very good. Shall we? As if summoned upon some kind of master, the roaches and bees rose from their nests and hives. By ground and by air, they stalked relentlessly toward a small and unassuming man destined to soon become food for the worms. I'm afraid if you want to learn how it all ends, you'll have to pony up a dollar for your own copy. <laughs> <Bzz>. <laughs> Yeah, Isn't he something? Oh. Isn't he something? Oh, he certainly is. Do I know you? Not formally, no. I'm Flora Kent. Oh. I'm, um... I was Dr. Eker's secretary. Oh, yes. I have him to blame for not yet finishing Rise of the Arthropods. I must say, it was wonderful to hear it read out loud. So much, um... less labor-intensive. I may even come again tomorrow night. <laughs> Personally, I wonder if Mr. Winged Sheen has lost his knack for it. And why is that, Miss? Cornelia Sweet. But this new story just seems so improbable. Insects branded as weapons? I wouldn't say that it's improbable. Any creature can be trained, can they not? The only reason I can think for you to have dragged me in here is because you have heard of my dislike of Dean Iker. I did, but I thought I should hear from you on the subject. <sighs> the man was a fossil, for starters. By that I take it you mean old-fashioned. Is that why you challenged his deanship? It wasn't only that. Iker's antiquated ways were holding the university back. In what way? In every way. Most relevant to myself. He refused a young woman admission into the graduate program on the basis of sex alone. As far as I can tell. How is that relevant to you? I was hoping to supervise her work. She was brilliant at fascinating ideas about extinguishing fires with the use of flu gas. I see. I admit to wanting Iker's job. I even admit to strongly disliking the man. But I did not kill him. What have you, Miss Hart? Results of my preliminary blood work. I thought you should see right away. Results show lethal levels of apitoxin in system. Dr. Eker didn't die in the fire? No. Have a look at this. Oh, something seems to have been left behind in there. Believe it to be a stinger. Dr. Eker was killed by a bee sting? Multiple bee stings. Judging by the amount of apitoxin in his blood, he was stung hundreds of times. Oh, would you watch where you're... Oh, Dr. Becton. I'm, I'm sorry, I was engrossed. Engrossed? In a book? Yes. Why does everyone think that's so strange? Oh, I, I just never took you for a reader. You and the rest of the world. I'll have you know I read at a very early age. Oh, really? How young? Eleven. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's not... You have a lovely day. Oh, you as well. <laughs> oh. oh, Beesbrook, hello. Possible Higgins Newsom? Right? Well, I know you. Miss Sweet, what an unusual costume. Are, are you a performer of some kind? Oh, goodness, no. <laughs> I'm a vendor. Today is my first time selling in a market, and I thought that I should dress the part. <laughs> Honey, uh, you're a beekeeper. Oh, I don't think I've earned that title yet. You see, some bees took up residence in my barn this spring, and I just couldn't bear to have them exterminated. Uh, even after the evil they do in Rise of the Arthropods? Well, that's nothing but fiction. <laughs> Based on fact, according to what Mr. Winged Sheen said last night. Oh, here, allow me. What a dear you are. Thank you. Uh -huh. I insist. 
You must try some of my honey as a thank you. Oh, I don't have anything. Do you have a spoon? <laughs> Silly goose, you have fingers. You just twirl it around. Mm. Easy as pie. See? Try it. Oh, so the professor's death wasn't a murder after all. I've spoken with Mr. Beesbrook, and he confirmed that there was indeed a kerosene lantern in the shed. It was likely the cause of the burn marks that I took as evidence of an accelerant. What a way to go, bees. Indeed, though I would argue being burnt alive is equally bad. Well, you're not wrong there, Melmucker. So, sir, I take it you approve of me releasing Dr. Laflamme? Of course. Nice to wrap a case up quickly for a change. Sirs, Higgins just called. Another person's been stung to death. Julia, what are you? I was shopping. Statements. Did you see what happened? I did. It was almost biblical. Biblical? In what way? Like the locusts in Egypt. Oh, Miss Kent? This is a surprise? It's like a living nightmare, more like it. First Dr. Eager, and now Miss Kuspinski. You're familiar with this victim as well? Yes, yeah, we work together at Knowing Nature. You work at a magazine alongside your duties at the university? As a volunteer, yes. Uh, Ms. Plisbinski, she was the editor, and I drew the illustrations, and we came here to gather more subscribers, and then she was just, she was swarmed out of nowhere. I see. I saw it myself, sir. She tried desperately to swallow them away, but it didn't work. They were only after her, sir. Oh, Julia? Yes, it's true. I saw it as well. We'll take it from here, Miss Kent. They were only after her. That's not possible, Julia. Well, then Henry and I saw the impossible. William, I must go. I'm off to the morgue. Miss Hart has ordered some supplies for me. Good luck. Oh! Mr. Higgins, isn't it just awful? Uh, sir, this is Miss Cornelia Sweet. We met last night at the author talk I mentioned. Did you know Miss Plesbinski well, Miss Sweet? No, no, we never met. But she must have been stung dozens of times. That's a lot of bees for a colony to lose. Do you have any idea what would cause bees to attack like this? Goodness, no. I've always found that if you don't bother bees, they don't bother you. Despite the way Mr. Winged Sheen characterizes them in his new book. Mr. Winged Sheen? The author I've been telling you about, sir? Come to think of it, sir. If anyone can help with this case, it'll be him. Dr. Arthropodium had raised an army of insects, and now he was ready to destroy his enemies. I'm sorry. I'm afraid there may be a misunderstanding. And why is that? Well, your book. It's a fantasy. <laughs> now, all my work is based on scientific fact. It's a point of pride. I see. Well, then, tell me, what causes bees to attack en masse? <laughs> there are several such occasions in my newest book, when a scientist... Dr. Arthropodium? That's right, Dr. Arthropodium. He... Well, he raises them. How exactly does he do that? Perhaps a better way to describe my work is inspired by fact. But I maintain I can be of assistance in your investigation. Well, then perhaps you can do so by pointing me to the set of facts that inspired the swarm of bees in the book. Of course, yes. Um, uh, let me think. I, I, you know, uh, perhaps I uh, misspoke. <laughs> Busy day, it seems. Yes. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Winged Sheen. This has been uh, illuminating. My office now. I'm bringing him with you. 
Explain yourself. I, I merely granted an interview. Yes. And now people believe we're in the midst of some sort of bee invasion. Mr. Winged Sheen, why would you grant an interview like this? Well, I saw it as my duty. If the effects of my book are coming to fruition, it's, it's only right I, I warn the public. But as we've discussed, your book is a work of fiction. Or could it perhaps be prophetic? How about this for a prophecy? You give one more interview, and you'll find yourself behind bars. Now get out of my station house. I need a drink. So what's the plan? Plan, sir? To deal with the bees. This is hardly a police matter. These deaths can't be considered murder. The only way that people will calm down is if we can give them an explanation. And you, my old mucker, are the man for the job. Couldn't you have brought another constable along, sir? I don't like bees, especially after reading that book. There's no reason to be concerned, Henry. Besides, everyone else had their hands full. My hands were full too, sir. I've still got cramps in them from all the statements I've been taking. Do you really think that the bees are rising up as Mr. Winghead Sheen suggests? Finally, an expert opinion, sir. I told you before, Clara, there's nothing to worry about. Thank you, Miss Kent. Between Eager breaking her heart, her friend's death, and that author rallying people up, poor Clara doesn't know what to believe. Oh, she and Dr. Eaker were courting? Not publicly. And he'd ended things recently, which is why she's changing jobs, but... I suspect you're not here to talk about departmental drama. Indeed not. We're hoping you can shed some light on these recent attacks. I have a meeting to get to, gentlemen, but whatever I can do to help. Yes, do you have any idea what could be causing these bees to behave so aggressively? Aggression isn't my area of expertise, but based on what Clara told me about Miss Plzinski's death, I do believe it could be alarm substance response. Well, what's that and how do we stop it? Bees secrete various chemical factors as a means of communicating. They can tell each other everything from the location of the queen to the best place to find nectar. Including where to swarm? Not exactly. Alarm substance response can alert bees to danger. And yes, if there are enough nearby, it could cause a swarm to form. Is there any way to detect this chemical substance? It's invisible to the naked eye, but it does have a sort of sweet banana smell to it. Excuse me, gentlemen, I, I really have to go. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Beesbrook. This has been most helpful. We need to return to that market. If we were able to locate a bee hive, then that would help explain why Miss Plasbinski was attacked. Well, sir, if that's the case, I have one final question for Mr. Beesbrook. Anything? I, I don't think that will be necessary, Henry. Well, I think you'll think differently if we find a hive around here. Something which is seeming less and less likely every minute. We've seen no sign of a beehive anywhere. Well, sir, I don't know what to tell you. This is the place. Whoa. Whoa. What is it? It smells sweet, sir. It's the alarm substance response. The bees are coming. Henry, it's been hours since the attack. I really don't think that the substance would still be potent. It smells sweet, and it is sticky. Do you really think this is the substance that Mr. Beesbrook was talking about? What else would it be, sir? Any idea? The dispersion suggests some sort of spray, and the sweetness reminds me. I did detect a similar scent while preparing Miss Plazinski's body. At the time, I presumed it was her perfume, but perhaps I was wrong. It has the same sweet smell. There appears to be a spot of discoloration right here on the fabric. Is there any way of determining exactly what that is? Presuming it was the same substance as on the magazine, the physical quality suggested some sort of starch. A few drops of iodine would confirm as much. Ah, indeed. Oh. Just as we expected. It's some sort of fruit or vegetable. I can run some more tests to discover which one. That won't be necessary. Why not? Because I believe it to be banana. Bananas? It is the alarm response substance. No, the alarm response substance isn't banana, Henry. But it is possible someone has made a synthesized version of it. 
Some villain is using bees as murder weapons? It's exactly like Mr. Wingachin said. That's... that's not possible. I didn't believe it was possible either, Miss Hart, until now. What changed your mind? The fact that we've discovered banana scent on our victim's clothing. Uh, Mr. Beesbrook told me that when a bee stings, it releases a chemical that is somewhat akin to banana. Fascinating. Horrifying. In either case, the scent is a sort of call to the cavalry that forces all of the other bees nearby to become aggressive. How could someone make a synthetic version of that? I don't know, but I suppose it's possible, given the right compounds. That's true. One would simply need to boil bananas and their peels, and over time, the essence would be transferred into the water. Then load that water into an atomizer, and the killer would then be able to direct the bees at whatever target he chooses. You know, you little murderers. But who on earth would go to all that trouble? It's a remarkable book, Mr. Wing and Sheen. It's almost as if you predicted the future. Some might even say I'm a modern Nostradamus. I wouldn't, of course, but I don't mind if you do. Thank you, dear. I'll treasure it. I've brought you something also. Oh. I'm hoping it'll be enough for you to sign all of these. Why, this is my entire catalog. I better get to it. Um, your name? Uh, Miss Cornelia Sweet. Oh, lovely. Didn't expect to see you here again. Well, I am a longtime fan. And that doesn't change, simply because I take issue with his last book. You won't be taking issue with it for very long. Well, why do you say that? Well, there you are. This book signing is over. But, but, but I've kept my word and not given a single interview. What cause do you have to interrupt my time with my admirers? Suspicion of murder. But this is an outrage. I wonder what your admirers have to say about this. Uh, 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 I've never seen it in my life. Sounds like more of your fiction, Mr. Winged Sheen. Henry? No. My jacket. You said it yourself. My books are fiction. I had no idea banana could spur bees into attacking. Your publisher tells me that sales of Rise of the Arthropods have tripled since Dr. Eaker was killed. Oh, that's wonderful. You directly <laughs> benefited from his death, Mr. Wing and Sheen. But it, it, it doesn't mean I killed him. You also had personal motive for wanting him dead, similarly with Don Plesbinski. But I don't know either of those people. What motive could I possibly have? Ms. Plesbinski published a review of your book written by Dr. Eaker in the most recent issue of her magazine. Well, I'm sure it's not as bad as the headline makes it sound. There is not a hint of scientific fact in this ridiculous tale by an author whose work rivals the worst of this format. That stings, I'll admit it. Dr. Eaker may have been right about the lack of facts, but you did use science to exact revenge on those who criticized your work. Mr. Winged Sheen? Oh, Anthony Winged Sheen is no more. I'm, I'm just a prisoner number now. Sir, it's not as bad as all that. Is it not? There remains some hope. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Why? That's a girl. It's driving me mad. Get it! No! 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 Mr. Wing and Sheen is under attack, sir! What do you mean, under attack, Henry? The bees, sir. They breached the station house walls. Oh. 
Uh, we need to get him out of the cells. Sounds like a job for Henry. Well, jump to it, Higgins. What? Why me? Why you? Isn't it bloody obvious? Yes. Sir. Well, go on. Uh, all right, sir. And you go with him. What? Huh? Go! Make way. Clear some space. Uh... What this means, Murdoch? Mr. Wayne Sheen isn't our killer, but someone wanted us to believe that he was. Were there finger marks on the bottle that he found in his things? No, I assume he'd worn gloves when spraying his victims. What I hadn't considered was that the item was planted. Hindsight and all that. Hmm. Hmm. Things are getting worse, not better. And how are we going to get the bees out of the cells? Uh, I've been trying to figure that out myself, sir, and I think I'm having an idea. You? The world's gone topsy-bloody-turvy. Well, go on, then. Let's hear it. Well, sir, it says here that the queen bee emits a kind of uh, homing beacon to their colony. Another of the chemical factors bees use to communicate. Exactly. So if we could get our hands on the queen of the colony, could we use her to lure the bees into captivity? I think that actually makes sense. It does, sir, but I don't think it's likely to work. Why not? Well, sir, we didn't find a large beehive outside of the station house, nor did we find one at the marketplace where Miss Plesbinski was attacked. So that tells me that the killer is the one releasing large numbers of bees. So they have the queen, then? Yes, but perhaps there is a way to rid the bees out of our cells and to discover who the true killer is. Oh. Sir, we know of three people who have access to large beehives. Mr. Beesbrook, Miss Sweet, and Miss Kent. And they all have connection to at least one of the victims. Kent's connected to all three. Yes, but I'm not sure Miss Kent could help us with our bee problem, given that she doesn't work directly with them. So that leaves Mr. Beesbrook and Miss Sweet. Have you been able to reach Mr. Beesbrook? I have not, sir. Then bring in Miss Sweet. I think that's most of them, but I'll do one more pass. A professional would have exterminated these bees, and, and that would have been just devastating. Isn't that a bit of an overstatement, Miss Sweet? Oh, well, not at all. Bees are crucial to our environment. Did you know they're responsible for pollinating many of our fruits and vegetables? I confess I did not. Yes, well, I've been reading up, and it's convinced me how important it is we protect bee life, which explains my use of this. A smoker? How so? Well, apparently, smoking has been used to calm bees for centuries. Is that right? Yes, and calm bees are happy bees, which will make them easier to capture. Miss Sweet, where were you this morning at about 9 a.m.? Well, at home ending to my hives. So you had nothing to do with the attack on Mr. Wing and Sheen? Oh, I wouldn't even know how to begin to make something like that happen. Well, that takes care of our bee problem. What about the other? Is Miss Sweet our killer? Sir, I don't know what to think. She claims to be an amateur, but her actions in the cells demonstrated some expertise. It's okay. See if you can find a connection between Miss Sweet and our other victims. Oh, and while you're at it, please do the same for Mr. Beesbrook and Miss Kent. Me? What? No, I haven't had a spare moment all week. Sounds like you're not about to get one now either. Well, go on, answer it. Station House 4. Oh, sirs. Anthony Wing and Sheen is awake. Oh, you'd fled by that point, Constable Higgins, but I imagine it was quite a sight. What with those... Buzzing fiends assaulting me from every angle like a hurricane. It was horrifying. Truly life-changing. I... Yet it's given me an idea. For a new book? Indeed. Imagine a man. I knew it. Um, sir, could you know it in five minutes? His socks were sprayed with liquidized banana. He was targeted. That's strange. That sounds like the work of a rival author to me. I don't believe that to be the case. I'll need you to account for your movements yesterday. Well, I was in the market in the morning selling my books. Then I had a long lunch with my publisher, and I gave my second reading in the evening. Why? 
at some point, you crossed paths with our killer. Uh, Miss Sweet and Miss Kent were also at the reading, if I'm not mistaken. Sir, Beesbrook was at the market as well. Beesbrook, ah! 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 Yes, I recognize that name. Is he some sort of scientist? He's a graduate student. Yes! Well, the fellow assaulted me at my stall. Quite pompous, if you ask me. <laughs> well, what did he have to say? Oh, he had the audacity to call my book anti-insect propaganda. Told me I was soon to get my comeuppance and stormed off. Sir, that's a threat if ever I've heard one. I agree. A and what of Miss Kent and Miss Sweet? Anything of note there? Miss Sweet? Uh, I believe she gave me a jar of honey. Yes, she's quite keen for people to taste it. Is that it? Yes. I, uh, she seemed, well, sweet. I, I doubt she had any cause to hurt me. Right. We'll start with Mr. Beesbrook. I'm good as it's it, Bennett. But hang my things before you go. I, I hate it when my suits get creased. So do I. Mm. And, uh, Henry, we'll need to be sure to hang on. Sir. Where did you get this? Oh. Yes, that, that, that was uh, the young lady at the reading gave it to me. What did she look like? Unremarkable. Glasses, I think. Miss Kent. Oh, Miss Kent? Stop right there. Detective, I didn't imagine I'd be seeing you so soon. I'd like you to explain this. I drew that from Mr. Wing and Sheen. It was intended as a threat against his life. I intended no such thing. No, that's an homage to his newest book. Then how is it you were expecting us? Is it this? A constable Tucker telephoned a short while ago asking about Dr. Eaker's relationship with Mr. Beesbrook, and I wasn't aware of any issues, but I called him back as soon as I found this entry in his journal. The idea that Bees danced to communicate is absurd and childish. I cannot allow Beesbrook to mar this institution with this research. And Mr. Beesbrook decided to change the focus of his research last month. And Dr. Eaker didn't like the idea. If he knew about this, then he had motive. Thank you. Have a look at this, sir. It's from Miss Plasbinski's magazine. Well, that connects Mr. Beesbrook to all of the victims. We regret appears to be a letter of rejection. But that would give Mr. Beesbrook motive for all of the attacks. Mr. Beesbrook! Mr. Beesbrook! Uh, sir, that's a bee. There's a bee right there. No. Henry, take a closer look. Look at the length of its torso. I think you'll find that this is a queen bee. We need to capture it. Give me a, a, a glass jar or something. Quickly. Yes, sir. Ah. Oh. I suppose that's why he didn't return my calls. Oh, no. No. After that bee. Don't let him get away. No, sir. Miss Sweet! Don't. Don't. Get on that. Stop! I said stop!
made quite a splash, sir. Well, I didn't catch her. <sighs> oh. Oh! What was that for? There was a bee, sir, clinging to your... Uh... Oh. Well, in that case, thank you. I only wish we could have captured Miss Sweet, too, sir. She has an army at her disposal. We'll never capture her unless we defeat them. Well, how in the world are we going to do that, sir, when they think that she's their queen? By reminding them that she isn't. Is that the queen, sir? Yes. Alcohol should preserve the queen bee's chemical communication system. Why on earth would you preserve the bloody thing? So that we can use her to draw Miss Sweet's bees away from her. How can you be sure it'll work? Well, bees are intelligent creatures. They follow the queen. Exactly. And preserving queen bees was the subject of the article that was rejected by Miss Plesbinski's magazine. Sir, I think I know why Miss Sweet targeted Beesburg. Why is that? Well, this file she had when she escapes her, it's from Beesbrook's office. It's a whole pile of research into dancing honeybees. Dancing, sir, could the creatures get any more sinister? What's your point, Higgins? Uh, sir, the point is, the research wasn't Beesbrook's, it was hers. So you mean to say that Miss Sweet did all of the actual research herself? Yes, sir, look. And Beesbrook took credit for it. That's why she went after him. That well, certainly wouldn't be the first time that's happened. So Miss Sweet wasn't the amateur she made herself out to be? So it would seem. So how do we get her without unleashing the little demons on us? I believe Henry can help. Smart, Miss Sweet. In fact, brilliant. I read your research paper on bees using dancing to communicate. It's a shame that Mr. Beesbrook stole that from you. There's more where that came from. I know more about bees than any man alive. Indeed. I can see why you turned your back on Anthony Winged Sheen, given he knows very little. What is it that they say? Don't meet your heroes, it tends to end badly. What I don't understand is what your other victims did to deserve their fate. Oh, they refuse to take me seriously. Beaker, he wouldn't even entertain my admission to study. He said I didn't have the constitution for the sciences. And the only thing that I don't have that Beesbrook did was a certain piece of anatomy. And Miss Plesbinski? Well. Without a piece of paper from the university deeming me an expert, she wouldn't publish me. But I hope that in their last miserable moments, they realized that this amateur was the architect of their deaths. Well, thank you for your confession, Miss Sweet. Now, will you come down to the station house and face your fate willingly? Surrender, you mean? Oh, <laughs> no, I think not. <laughs> Please, Miss Sweet, it would be much easier for all of us. Mm, another man trying to tell me what to do. It's funny. I'd wager that you haven't even realized. You've had the upper hand all along. <laughs> Good luck getting out of here alive, Detective Murdoch. <laughs> simply soothing them with the sweet smell of lavender. A smoker? Oh, 
No, no, don't, don't! What have you done? Why aren't they listening to me? What have you done? They're simply responding to their true queen. And you, Miss Sweet, are under arrest. Excellent work, Henry. That was the most harrowing 15 minutes of my life, sir. But the bees were never even near you. Yes, but they could have been, sir. At any moment, they could have been. What will become of them now? They'll be donated to the university. After the past few days, I suspect they'll be lining up to study bees now. Well done, gentlemen. Does that say what I think it does, sir? Mr. Winged Sheen is out of the hospital and is already working on his next novel. This one will be a sensational but fact-based account of a celebrated novelist targeted by a mad admirer. <laughs> Good, at least there'll be some veracity to the work this time. Oh, how could there not be, sir? Oh, and sir, apparently there's a policeman featured in the new book as well. I'll bet you anything that he's based that character on me. I'm sorry, Higgins. But from what I've read, I don't think it's you that he based the character on. Me? Well, you must be joking. After all I did for him? Uh, this will not stand. Where do you think you're going? To have a word with Winged Sheen. If he's going to write about all this, I expect to be included. Well, Henry has a point. Capturing Miss Sweet was a team effort, after all. Perhaps Mr. Winged Sheen could insert you into the story as a... as a sidekick of sorts, Higgins. Sidekick? Although... I do like the idea of a sidekick of my own. Murdoch is your assistant. <laughs> You're bloody kidding, Higgins. What's wrong with that? I think we make a dynamic pair. Yes, we could be called the dynamic twosome. Ah, so it doesn't really roll off the tongue, but Winged Sheen can fix that. I've got to find him before he leaves town. The Higgins noosome twosome. Not so good. Switch it up again, I'm creating, I'm goofy And if you try to fuck it up, I won't end up so smoothly Stretch 
shit out, bring the fruit, call me monkey Luffy. I've been making all these moves, so don't call me no pussy.